Hey everyone, in today's video, we are going to have a comparison review between the Microsoft Surface Laptop and the Surface Book 2. First of all, special thanks to Microsoft Singapore for providing the review units. It's really great to be able to test out these devices to see what they are capable of. Now, this review may be a bit too long, so if you want to save some time, you can actually check out my text review. This review will be from the perspective of a content creator, more specifically someone who uses computers to create visuals like graphic design, artworks, digital painting, one who edits photos and videos. Um, those things are basically what I do on a daily basis, so I'll be talking about all those workflow and how these devices uh, whether or not they are suitable for my type of workflow. Let me cut straight to the chase and give you the bottom line up front. Both devices, they have the laptop form factor. The unique selling point or the main selling point of the Surface Book 2 really comes down to its ability to detach the screen and use it in tablet mode. So if you are someone who writes a lot, who needs to draw for a long period of time at a go, the tablet form factor is much more comfortable to work with. You can place the tablet on the table, you can get one of those laptop stands to place it, or you can attach the tablet back to the keyboard. Just flip it around, attach it back to the keyboard, and put it on the table, and you can have an inclined uh, surface to work on. The battery life for the tablet alone is about 5 hours. If you attach it to the keyboard, you can get battery life from 7 to 10 hours. The battery life varies depending on the app that you use. So for example, if you are editing photos, videos, you're exporting videos, um, that is obviously going to take up more power, it's going to drain the battery faster. But Overall, over the last two weeks that I have um, spent the time with these devices, battery life is quite good. It is more than satisfactory for me. Each time I look at the battery bar, I always wonder, wow, um, I can't imagine that the battery can last for so long because with the Surface Pro 4 that I had earlier, the battery life for that wasn't that good. But with these new devices, the laptop and Surface Book 2, the battery life has improved significantly. If you want to write or draw on the Surface laptop screen, you can certainly do so, but it's going to be awkward because you are actually writing on a laptop screen. You can have the Surface Laptop on the table, you can write on it, you can draw on it, but the screen is going to wobble. You can put your hand behind it to stabilize it, but it's still going to wobble slightly. And this angle, this is the maximum angle, this is not really a very comfortable angle to work with for a long period of time. So if you are someone who just need to take some notes occasionally, just um, doodle some um, stuff, do some simple drawings occasionally, working on the laptop screen is fine, but this is um, not that suitable for working for long periods of time. Another thing I want to mention about the screen is the resolution. The Surface Laptop has a resolution of 2256 by 1504 on its 13.5 inch screen. The resolution to me, it's considered sharp enough. If you want to look close and look for pixelation, yes, you can see the pixels, but this is considered quite a sharp screen in my opinion. I have no problems with the resolution. For the Surface Book 2, the 13.5 inch screen, it has significantly higher resolution of 3000 by 2000. On the 15 inch model, it's 3240 by 2160 so this has a larger screen this has the most resolution having high resolution on a small screen makes everything look sharp if you keep the screen size the same for example the surface laptop 13.5 inch screen this is also the same screen size but this has significantly higher resolution so everything will appear to be sharper the photo will be sharper the user interface is going to be sharper but um, when I'm seated from one arm's length away from both screens, they look the same to me. So depending on the type of work that you do, this may 
or may not be important the resolution may or may not be important the main difference really comes in when you zoom in at 100% so for example this is a photo of six pens let me zoom in to 100% it is now zooming to uh, fit the whole photo that is why all three photos they look the same but let's see what happens when I zoom in to 100% and this is 100% this is 100% so with the surface laptop which has the lowest resolution among the three screens I'm only able to see four out of the six pens on the surface book 2 the 13.5 inch screen I can see five pens this is 100% zoom this is also 100% zoom and this is also 100% zoom but this time I can see six pens so with more resolution, I can see more of the photo. So for example, uh, in this instance, I do not need to pan around the photo to um, look at the whole photo. I already see pretty much, I already see a large area. But with the lower resolution on this laptop, I need to pan the photo around just to look at different areas of the photo. So that's the difference between a high res screen and a low res screen. Having said that, I'm perfectly fine working on any resolution because they are all considered high resolution for me. Anyway, I always connect my laptop to an external monitor. So um, the resolution on these screens, they do not matter to me as much. But if you only have the laptop, then it might be better to get a higher resolution screen. So the main difference between the two is the screen and the tablet mode the second biggest difference is with the surface book 2 you have a lot more configurations to choose from you can choose between the 13.5 inch versus the 15 inch screen and on the 13.5 inch model you can choose to equip it with a proper graphics card a gtx 1050 on the larger 15 inch model you can get a gtx 1060 so with the Surface Book 2, you can get proper graphics card. If you're someone who plays computer games, then obviously having a proper graphics card would benefit you. But for graphic design purposes, or even for video editing, having a dedicated graphics card is actually not that important. If you do 3D work, well, let me just say that you can do 3D work on the Surface Book 2. The graphics card is going to help you navigate the scene. You can zoom, pan, rotate the scene, high polygon scenes without much lag. But um, that is not the bottleneck. The bottleneck is actually the processors that are inside. Now with the Surface Laptop, you can only choose between dual core processors. With the Surface Book 2, you can choose either dual-core processors or quad-core processors. The quad-core processors, they have a lower clock speed. So when it comes to rendering 3D scenes or rendering videos, the speed is not that optimal, especially when you compare it to other brands of laptop. Let me show you the performance you can expect with the Surface devices. So this is the Surface Laptop that is equipped with the Intel i7. This is a dual-core 2.5GHz processor. Now the performance on this will be quite similar to the Surface Book 2 because the Surface Book 2 actually is slightly more powerful compared to the Surface Laptop. So for this particular document that I'm working on, this is a 120 by 60 centimeters document at 300 dpi. The file size is 900 megabytes. It has a lot of layers. I want to create a new adjustment layer, a hue saturation layer. And I want you to pay attention to the colors because I'm going to change them on the fly. I want to let you see whether or not there is any lag as I drag the slider to change the colors. So as I drag the slider, the colors, they update almost instantly. On the screen so this is actually more than satisfactory for the type of work that I do on a daily basis this is very responsive so let me close this let me zoom in and out 
to let you see the screen redraw. So the zoom is able to, the laptop is able to zoom in and out very responsively and the screen redraw is very fast. So no problems with panning as well. What I mean by a screen redraw is with some computers, um, older computers, as you pan around or as you zoom in and out like this, sometimes the file, it would redraw in rectangular blocks before it will show you the whole image. But here, this is very good performance, almost uh, instant. For graphic design, photo editing, digital painting, both um, no problem at all. If you want to digital paint on this, it's best to get a graphics tablet and connect it to the USB port. Speaking of USB ports, um, let's take a look on the side. On the Surface laptop, there is one full-size USB 3 and one mini display port. This is the 3.5mm audio jack. So these are the only two connection ports on the Surface laptop. It's quite limiting. I use these two all the time especially the mini display port because I need to connect the Surface Laptop to my external monitor. I use that every single day. It's just much better to use a larger monitor whenever it's possible. As for the full-size USB 3, I actually have a lot of devices that still use this port, so I use this almost every day as well. On the Surface Book 2, there are two full-size USB 3, and there is this SD card reader which I use every day because I take photos and I make videos every day. I need to import um, the photos and videos using this. So this is incredibly convenient for me. As for the full size USB 3 ports, I have scanners, I have external storages, I have SD card readers. Basically all of my devices, they still use these two ports. So the lack of any USB Type-C is not really that much of a problem for me. There is a USB Type-C port on the Surface Book 2, but this is not the Thunderbolt 3 port. So this will not be able to take advantage of external graphics card, for example. And in the previous model of the Surface Book 2, this is actually a mini display port. So now for me to connect an external monitor, I need to buy an adapter uh, Type-C to a display port adapter. So I do miss the mini display port. Maybe they should put it here. This port here, this is actually the power charging port. And this is similar to this on the Surface Laptop. And as you can see, the thickness of the Surface Book, this is significantly thicker compared to the Surface Laptop because the tablet is thick, the hinge is about the same thickness as the tablet, and this hinge goes all the way. This keyboard area here, this is as thick. But with the Surface Laptop, the screen is much thinner just at the base, it's uh, thicker. And also notice this gap here. If you look in between, you can actually see the keys on the keyboard. Build quality for both devices is excellent. For the body, they are using aluminum. This is brushed aluminum, which is very smooth. This is some sort of magnesium alloy. Now, the brushed aluminum is actually a bit colder to touch compared to this. And this has a more textured surface compared to the aluminum. For the keyboards, both are fantastic to type on, really comfortable. The thing that I do not like about this keyboard is actually the this material here, the Alcantara material, which is some sort of fabric. If you are someone who sweats a lot or, I mean, there is always grease on the hand, fabric can attract grease and it's not easy to clean fabric. As compared to a metallic surface, you can just use a damp cloth to wipe clean. So for maintenance purposes, this is definitely my preferred choice. The Surface Laptop weighs 1.25 kg. The Surface Book 2 with the same 13.5 inch screen weighs 1.53 kg. This is definitely lightweight. This is 
slightly heavier and because of the design it feels chunkier as well trackpad for both devices are also really nice to use very large and accurate for graphic designers who use a lot of keyboard shortcuts i feel that it's important for me to point out that there is no control button on the keyboard on the right side the surface book 2 also uses the same keyboard layout there is no control button on the right side Personally for me, I like to use the mouse even though there is a trackpad. So whenever I use my mouse, whenever I want to use keyboard shortcuts, especially with buttons around here, I am not able to do so because there is no control key. For example, if I want to increase the font size, I want to control the angle brackets, I cannot do so because my fingers, they cannot stretch so long to access the control here and the brackets here. I cannot control open, control P, control L. Um, I really do wish that there is a control button here. Like this Logitech keyboard, for example, there is this control button here. This is so much more useful compared to this button. On the Surface Book 2, um, when you detach the screen and when you flip it over like this, and when you fold it back down, you are actually covering the keyboard. So now you no longer have access to the keyboard. And if you want to use keyboard shortcuts, well, then you have to get another keyboard, something like this. I wish that they had made this keyboard here wireless. That would have been awesome. If you want to use the tablet like this connected to the keyboard, then you need to get another keyboard for the keyboard shortcuts. So to conclude, Surface Laptop versus Surface Book 2, well, you just have to ask yourself one question, whether your workflow requires you to work on the tablet for extended periods of time. If yes, then the Surface 2, it is the more appropriate choice, even though it's quite expensive. So that's all for my review today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you happen to be using the Surface Book 2 to create visual content, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear about your experience working on the tablet, working on the keyboard. So yeah, thanks for watching today's video. I hope this is helpful. See you in the next one. Bye.